Hello, hello, happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to the Pour Your Heart Out Latte Art Masterclass. My name is Georgia and I will be your host for this afternoon. So, we're gonna be spending the next 40-ish minutes together, 40, 45, we'll see how we get on. And today's masterclass is solely going to be focused on getting all of you guys pouring your beautiful, beautiful latte art hearts but while we wait for everyone to arrive, because there is an awful, awful lot of you today, while we wait for everyone to arrive, for everyone to get comfy, I am just gonna make a very quick coffee, very quickly. So if you are arriving, don't panic. We just, we need to make a coffee to get started, right? So today, like I say, we're gonna be just focusing on the latte art. So we're not gonna be focusing on the coffee at all. Um, but what I do want to say, and I'll say it again in a second, but it's, it's important, is that we, um, <laughs> there's a lot of you today. So we do have the Q&A box open, so you can ask questions. And look, I encourage you to ask questions, but please wait until the end of the section. So we're going to be talking not at all about the coffee today. We're going to do a recap of the milk texturing, and then we're going to go straight into latte art. But just be patient with your questions. We've got two got team two answering them so please be patient wait until the end of the section because the likelihood is that i will cover your question i will probably answer it if it's anything machine specific it probably won't get answered because um there's there's a lot of you and there's probably going to be quite a lot of questions so anything machine specific is unlikely to get answered but we do have an amazing team of experts for that so don't worry i'll talk all about everything at the end so as I mentioned, if you are just joining today, welcome everybody, my name is Georgia and this is the Pour Your Heart Out Latte Art Masterclass where we're going to focus on getting you a beautiful, beautiful latte art heart, um, hopefully so that you can, you can show, show your friends, show your family and impress everyone. So we're not going to be talking about coffee today, we're just going to be focusing a little bit on milk texturing, just a really quick recap of how to get the kind of ideal milk for latte art. And then we're gonna go straight in and we're gonna pour loads and loads of hearts and go over the technique. But while we wait for everyone to arrive, don't know if I've mentioned it already, but there is quite a lot of you today. I'm just making a quick coffee. Very, very, very quick. I'm actually not sure how this is gonna pour. So let's let's find that out together. Let's go on this journey together. I'm hoping, hoping it's not terrible. Okay. Hey, that's all right, not too bad. We're using assembly today, pop that there, just from beans.com. Um, but as I mentioned, my name is Georgia, um, and yeah, I'll be your host for this afternoon. So once everyone's in, once everyone's settled, we will get straight into pouring latte art and doing all of that fun stuff. We're gonna talk about pouring with um, regular milk, dairy milk, stuff from the cow and also a little bit um, just about alternatives I'll do kind of one or two maybe things of, of oat milk uh, but it's mainly mainly doing dairy milk today just because that's what I drink um, so 
that's my my preference although i do love do love a bit of oat milk i'm quite partial to it in fact here in sage studios today we made some oat milk um ice cream in our um soft scoop uh ice cream machine um so we do we do love a bit of oat milk but let's texture this milk and then let's get started as i said with the questions i'm going to mention it a couple of times please do wait until the end of the section to ask them um my wonderful team behind the camera there's only two of them so please just do have a little bit of patience and anything machine specific is unlikely to get answered. okay so just starting out by adding some air making sure we've got that lovely rotation i hope you can see that all that out there we deliberately underexposed just because it's white on white um i'm less worried about the milk more worried that you can see the latte oil, which i think you will be able to um but because it's white on white it's, it's quite hard to get exactly right but i think this is okay there we go first touch of that milk And as I said, we will do a, a recap of steaming the milk or texturing the milk. Um, it's not going to be super in-depth because we actually have another masterclass for that. Now, I think a lot of you came from the email that was sent out the other day. Um, so we have two masterclasses that are kind of the next step. So hopefully you've watched our Sage Appliances Live Home Coffee uh, masterclass. is kind of like your espresso fundamentals. Hopefully you've already attended that masterclass, you've already watched it, and this is like your next step. Um, so we have this masterclass, which is all about latte art, and then we've also got one that's about milk texturing. I'm just going to move that there so it's nice and in shot. Okay, so I'm going to start here. I'm going to pour from a height for our canvas. Lovely. And then up and through. And there's our heart. Look at that lovely lovely stuff nice and easy hopefully we're gonna get you pouring beautiful beautiful hearts like that by the end of this masterclass there she is you can see that quite nicely i hope okay i'm gonna pass to our moderators please introduce yourselves tell me are we ready to go how are the numbers looking hi there i am tom and we currently have about 350 people in the masterclass amazing awesome ready to go ready to go okay let's do this shall we so as i said if you missed that bit don't worry don't panic you've not missed the whole master class i was just making quick coffee to kind of get us started for the class so we're going to be together for the next 40 minutes or so talking all about how to pour latte art heart now as i mentioned just a second ago and um, hopefully you have attended our fundamentals of espresso the sage appliances live home coffee masterclass that would be ideal to attend if you haven't already because we're not going to focus on the coffee today this is all about latte art all about getting that lovely beautiful heart in your coffee so we're just going to be focusing on milk texturing pouring the latte art and not about the coffee so if you're kind of struggling with your espresso you've not got a, a half decent um espresso yet definitely go and attend that masterclass completely free like this one um, and it will help you along your way. But let's get started, shall we? So we're gonna do a quick recap on milk texturing. I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about milk alternatives and then we'll get on to the, the real reason that we're here. So I have got numerous, numerous jugs behind me here. And today we are using, so we do get a lot of questions. I'm just gonna move that over there. There we go, hopefully you can see that. Um, we do get numerous questions about kind of what milk you should be using and all those sorts of things. So we in the studio here, this is not an ad, this is just what we get in our Sainsbury's delivery every single week. We use Cravendale and the reason we use Cravendale is because it's filtered, it doesn't necessarily have to be this brand, but filtered milk um, is unaffected by seasonal change. So if you are, pardon me, I'm recovering from cold, um, we are, um, if you are using dairy milk, filtered milk is, is the best kind of most stable milk. It kind of stays like this throughout the year, not like this. However, with that being said, if I've run out of milk, I do just pop over to the garage over the road and buy whatever they have. It's no, not a special brand. It's just from wherever they get their milk from. So any milk is okay. You will find that whole milk for latte art and for milk texturing is the easiest because it has the highest amount of fat and proteins. So you will find that that is the easiest milk to use. Um, but we use 
semi-skimmed, green top milk, and it's absolutely fine. For any kind of alternatives, just make sure that you're using the barista edition of whichever it is, almond, oat, soy, pea, rice, there's loads of them. Just make sure that you're using the, um, the barista edition of that because it has a few added kind of like emulsifiers and things just to help you get that beautiful texture for your microphone. The other thing I would say, especially if you are using um, any kind of milk alternatives, is just to keep your jugs in the fridge because it will help give you a little bit longer to texture your milk. Um, you want as long as you can possibly have just to kind of get that beautiful texture. So I'm gonna fill this jug up halfway. And the reason I say halfway is because it's kind of the best gauge um, for, for getting the best texture of milk so if you put less in you'll kind of struggle to texture and likewise if you put more in you'll probably find that the jug is going to overflow so we're going to start here by preheating our steam wand and what you will find is that you get all of this kind of water and condensation come out at the end of the steam wand and we want to get rid of that oh my god pardon me can't talk today we want to get rid of that we don't want that going into our milk. So we're gonna preheat, make sure it's nice and steamy. If your milk is making this awful noise, like the foxes, you've not added any air. So we're gonna just take the tip out of the steam one. It should be surfing the surface of the milk. And we want to have this kind of ripping, tearing paper sound, okay? And it, we've got a vortex. I usually say one hand on the handle, one hand on the side, but I've started doing it like this recently. Totally blame me, I don't know. I like to mix it up, keep myself on my toes. Um, we have this tearing paper sound and we have that constant movement, that vortex there, you can see it's going round. And it should kind of look a little bit like the steam wand is sucking up the bubbles that you're creating. It's actually not, it's just texturing them into microphone. But if it kind of looks like they're disappearing up the steam wand, you're probably doing the right thing. Now, for dairy milk, we want to heat this to about 65 degrees. So you keep one hand on the, on the hand here, on the side here or on the bottom, just to gauge the temperature, okay? So as soon as it's too hot to touch, remove the hand. No burns here, we don't want you in hospital. And you just wanna let that go for another few seconds and then turn it off. So your hand naturally is gonna tap out, it's gonna become too hot to touch at about 55 degrees, unless you have asbestos hands, in which case, good luck. Um, but it's gonna usually, for most people, it's gonna tap out about 55 degrees. Now. For dairy milk, we want to get that to the optimum temperature of about 65 degrees. So we count to six, just for a few more seconds and just let it go a little bit longer, okay? And then what we end up with is this beautiful glossy milk, no bubbles in there, you can see that beautifully, okay? And we're gonna swirl, 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 swirl. Now the reason we do this is because microfoam is less dense. So you have two things in here, microfoam on the top, and you have kind of warm, heated milk on the bottom. And microfoam naturally is less dense than hot milk, so it's going to rise. But we want them to be one entity. So just swirl, 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 swirl. It also makes your milk nice and glossy. Now we're looking for the texture here of kind of wet paint. We open a fresh tin of that beautiful white paint, not magnolia, white. Um, and it's, it's kind of this very same texture. It's glossy, no big bubbles and it's kind of what you're looking for. Now, when we swirl, we kind of do it like this, but we want, see how I'm doing that there? I'm not, I'm not doing this, okay? We want the milk to be coating the sides of the jug. Now, if you do have any big bubbles, no stress, no worries, don't panic. A light tap, okay? One tap, don't get it all over your side, on your kitchen counters, don't do that. Two taps at the most. Um, if you're doing more than two taps, you've probably not textured your milk quite right that's okay it's not the end of the world um but don't do any more than two taps you don't need to if you've if you've done two and you've not got all the bubbles out more taps won't help you okay the other thing that i was going to say has just gone out of my head i was focusing on the taps i'm not gonna lie it will come back to me but that's okay so this is what we're looking for beautifully textured really really nice milk this is going to be ideal for pouring latte art okay now, let's do that one more time. I can kind of do that. That's about the right temperature. Actually, while I, sh I should mention here, because I will forget, it's just come into my head. This is what I was gonna say, but there we are. Um, the reason that we do 65 degrees for dairy milk is because after 65, because you do get, it's a very common thing. People joke about it all the time, right? People, and look, this may be you. And if it's you, 
that's okay, don't worry about it. But people do go into coffee shops all the time and they will ask for their order extra hot. Extra, extra, extra hot. Get it out of the volcano, the furnace. But the thing with that is, is that past 65 degrees, your microphone is gonna start to break down. Okay, so you're not gonna have as, an, as enjoyable of an experience with that extra hot coffee. 65 degrees is ideal for drinking about then and there. You can kind of let it sit for a few minutes, but you wanna drink it fairly quickly. Um, and it's gonna give you that beautiful microfoam. After 65 degrees, you are gonna struggle to pour latte up because your bubbles are just gonna break down. And you'll see it in the cup, they will break down and it's not gonna be as nice. If you like you, you drink extra hot, that's fine. Just be aware that you're sacrificing the ability to do latte art um, and it's gonna be a little bit harder to do. Same with um, milk alternatives. We say 55 milk alternatives because they burn easier, they're gonna sort of separate and get a little bit icky. So let's do some, some oat milk. It's fresh out of the fridge here. You wanna give it a shake. Same with most alternatives. We use Oatly Barista Edition. I also like Minor Figures. Um, Califia Farms, all the barista editions though, because they are gonna texture that a little bit nicer, but give it a shake, because it's gonna separate, it's gonna settle a little bit, and if you don't shake it, you will notice. Same thing though, we're gonna fill this up about halfway, so where the spout starts, so we're going to kind of here, about halfway. Now the thing with oat milk, is that because it does have not really any fat, not really any protein, all right, it's oats, oats and water, is that we do need to add just a little bit more air to kind of make up for that, okay? So same process though, I'm gonna start by preheating the steam wand, let it get nice and steamy, really nice and hot, get rid of, get rid of any of that water that's in there, okay? There we go, lovely. And then we're gonna pop it in, and again, this, we don't want that, it means we're not adding any air, okay? So we want the tip of the steam wand sitting the surface of the milk, but with the fact that this is oat milk in mind, just going to add a little bit more air, about 20%, okay? So let's say we'll do seven seconds instead of six. I don't know what the maths are on that, but that's just about how I work it out. Um, but we do just need to add that little bit more air. The other thing that you can do is you can make the shot first and just let the milk sit for a little bit. Um, that will do kind of a very, very similar thing. But the reason we say with oat milk, keep the jugs in the fridge, is because, like I say, you want as long to texture your milk as possible. And because you don't heat it, as hot you have less time to work with to get the same result so by keeping a jug in the fridge everything is nice and cold okay two hot cups turn it off straight away we're aiming for 55 degrees and there's our oat milk so it looks exactly the same okay no big bubbles I'm just going to wipe the steam one down do this with a damp cloth one of these get them on a roll pound land nice and damp if you do it with a dry cloth it's going to stick and be disgusting and then you also want to purge your steam on afterwards just like that but this got exactly the same result even though it's oat milk it's exactly the same okay nice and glossy no big bubbles it's the texture there bring this back a bit the texture of wet paint and like i say if you do struggle with the oat milk people will say it's not harder but it, it is um, if you do struggle with it it's something that i learned and it really really helped me is have your shot ready to go into the machine, have it ready to go, but do your oat milk first. I'm not sure how this works with other alternatives because I don't did it with oat, but have your milk, um, do your milk first, and then as soon as it's done, press your button and do your shot. So it's gonna sit for about 30 seconds and it's just gonna thicken up just ever so slightly and help you to pour. Okay, let's do one more dairy milk. But I just wanna point this out quickly. Can we get that top camera? So I poured this at the start of class. I don't know how long ago that was because I don't have about 10 minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, seven minutes, 20 minutes. I'm not sure however long, 20, there we go. And it's still just as perfect as it was when I poured it. This is perfect milk, not to my own horn, okay? But this is perfect milk, mm -hmm. this is what you want. It should be able to sit for half an hour, 45 minutes and look like this. If it's starting to bubble, if it's starting to break up, your milk's probably a little bit too hot or you've not quite textured it. Right, but let's leave that there until the end of the class and let's just see, does it hold up? Okay, let's do one more dairy and then we'll move on to what you want here. Just because the thing about latte art is you can have the technique down, but if your milk isn't right, you are really, really, really going to struggle. If your milk is too thin, if your milk is too thick, you're gonna struggle, okay? So, one more time. 
let's preheat that steam on to get rid of all of that water that's going to come out of there and then we'll add our air okay lovely pull that out just be careful when you do that i burn myself on it all the time okay so tip of the steam on surfing the surface three four Five. It's really, I will say, it's very hard to count exactly how long you're, you're doing this for, but something to be aware of is that the further out your steam wand is, so the tip of your steam wand is, the more air you're going to add. So you really just want to be able to see the very, very tip of it and kind of try and keep it nice and stable, okay? I'm not moving it around, I'm really pulling on it, it's in one place, it's nice and stable. I'm, I'm kind of angling, you can see that there. Just the slightest movements, just to make sure I'm getting the right amount of rotation or if I can see any bubbles left. Because even here now, there's no bubbles. This is what we want, okay? Everything is being textured into microfoam, too hot to touch. Let like just a few seconds and then turn it off, okay? And it should, in a perfect world, straight out of the, of the steam wand have no bubbles. That's a, an indication that you've kind of done the right thing, okay? So, there she is, beautifully textured, and it's the same thing again, wet paint, if it's too thick as well, that's the other thing, so kind of to recognise that you have milk that's the right thickness, it should really be coating the sides of the jug just a little bit, and then dissipate, that's going to be really hard for you to see, but it should, if I do this, it's coating, and then I stop, and it dissipates, if your milk is too thin, it will not coat the sides of the jug and you will struggle to pour latte out with it. If your milk is too thick, you will find that there's probably a bit of an island in the middle. And again, it's workable, but it's going to be a lot harder to pour latte out with. So we're just kind of going for somewhere in the middle, that comfortable medium where we've got a beautiful amount of microfoam, it's glossy and it's silky. Okay, let's pour some latte out, shall we? So, firstly... I just want to talk to you about cups. This is very important. These are my preferred cups, okay? If you are pouring into a tea mug, now listen, I love mugs. I very much have an affinity for them, in fact. Always have, always will. Even, you know, like when you were a kid and you'd get one in, in your Easter egg, love that. That was a huge win for me. But the thing is, if you are pouring into that, that's what I would kind of classify as, as your classic tea mug or something that you would have like an Americano in. Um, you're going to struggle because the problem is is that you're going to run out if your if your cup is too tall this is about as kind of tall as I would go if your cup is too tall and thin you're going to run out of milk before you can get the tip of the jug close enough to get any art out get any of that thick white out to pour your art so something like this so these are our masterclass cups this is the egg cup from Love Ramix so you can buy these without the markings but you can buy this exact cup um, Love Ramix, you can get them from Best Coffee and Love Ramix. Um, and this is the egg cup in the cappuccino size. They do these in latte, they do them smaller, um, they do a true flat white size. We all drink flat whites out of these, but they do do a true flat white size. Um, so if you prefer a latte, that's fine. They do them in that size as well. But the reason that this is nice is because it's shallow and it's wide. So you don't actually have to do that much before you can get the tip of your jug close enough. Same with this. It's, it is tall, but it's not that tall. So this is an 8-ounce Duralex cup. You can get these on Amazon quite cheap. Um, and you'll probably find that if you start to learn in this, you'll find it easier. And likewise, you might find it easier if you start in this. But it, this is nice because you, you can get a good amount of angle on it and get your jug in there. The top of this is quite wide, so it's going to be that, that much easier to get in there. These are really, really nice cups. But anything that's kind of shallow and wide is probably going to be your best friend like I say don't go trying to pour into a sports direct mug because you're going to get into a bit of trouble there but when we let me get my jug so when we pour a heart or any kind of latte art and the reason we're focusing here on the heart is because the heart is kind of the base of your pattern so for any 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 pattern your tulips wing tulips rosettas swans anything out and beyond that is for the most part started off with a heart or at least the motions of pouring a heart so it's important to walk before you can run okay so to do this you want your cup like this same with this with this one i would either hold it like this or kind of like this but with this you want the claw okay like that 
in my hand on an angle okay and then we want to start pouring up here so you can see that i'm not pouring down here i'm pouring up here at a height the reason we want to do that is because we want a thin stream of milk to start with so we can pour our canvas so our canvas is going to help us get a nice clean base so that we can really see our pattern and it's nice and clear and we need to do pour from height so that we don't get that thick white which is what we want to pour our latte art just the canvas we want a thin stream of milk and to do that we need to be about up here about three centimeters if you're down here you're gonna get that white out straight away and you probably get a cappuccino pattern rather than any kind of heart okay so to pour your canvas <clears throat> there's a few ways you can do it some really cool people you see them on instagram and they're like moving it all together at once i can't do that it's very difficult but some people will kind of this is what i did when i started i would just do like a hit of milk and we want to film it fill it kind of about halfway two thirds full okay so you can do a just a hit of milk you can do side to side like that you can do round you can do a hit and then another hit you just want it to be about halfway to two thirds full okay and something to consider here is the more full that your cup is before you start your pattern the smaller your heart is going to be so if you want a heart that's going to fill up oh where are we here we are if you want a heart that's going to fill up this whole cup you would probably want to be closer to a half and if you want kind of like a small cute one in the middle then you can fill it up a little bit more this is because of surface tension i'll just chuck this in there because it's quite fun so surface tension just means that less liquid that you have in the cup the easier it is for what you're adding to kind of flow and move and the more liquid you have in the cup it's not able to spread so just consider that when you're pouring your heart if you're thinking oh i kind of get a bit but they're really tiny it's probably because you're adding too much canvas it's easily done and that's okay but you just want to do halfway to a third two thirds sorry so we're going to start do our canvas okay and you can hold the jug like this like this like this however it's comfortable there's no right or wrong but you just want your your wrist See how my wrist is just really floppy. I'm gonna be nice and loose and not stiff. If you're stiff, you're gonna really struggle. This is really, really loose and just don't think about it, okay? So, we're gonna pour our canvas, there we go. And then we want to get the tip of the jug as close to the coffee as we can. If you have to, it's a little bit of a cheat, but if you have to, touch the cup on the jug. You'll hear that sometimes in videos where they're touching it. Ideally, we wouldn't, but that's okay. You want the tip of the jug in the middle, okay? And you speed up your pour a little bit, pour, 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 pull up because we want that thin stream of milk. So when we start to see a circle, thin stream of milk, up and cut through like that. That is the thing that people struggle with the most. I will tell you now, it feels very unnatural. It feels like you're sweating. It feels like, oh my God, I'm going to spill everywhere. I'm going to burn myself. I'm going to end up in the hospital. You're not. You're not. Okay. The worst thing, unless you've overheated your milk, <laughs> the worst thing that's going to happen is that you're going to spill it. You're gonna spill it on the floor and what are you gonna do? You're gonna clean it up and you're gonna do it again, okay? Just have that confidence. It's that kind of fear that's gonna stop you. So just go for it. It's having that confidence to be like, it's fine. I'm gonna spill it. And you'll kind of get over it eventually, but I was like that too. I was like, ooh, I'm gonna spill it, it's gonna go everywhere. You won't, you won't. And if you do, like I say, get the spray out, get a bit of kitchen roll or a reusable kitchen roll if you've got that, wipe it up and do it again and it'll be fine don't stress if you stress you're going to struggle just be loosey-goosey with it okay let's pour so i can actually show you this what i'm going to do just for for time because i appreciate you know we can't all be here forever in this master class that is and, and in life that was a bit deep but um you know we're on a time time limit here and because this is not at all about the coffee i'm gonna split my shots um, it'll come out a little bit lighter but it's just so we can do more of them so you can really get the gist of that pattern. So I'm going to split the shots. Let's do this. So once that's all ground up and lovely, by the way, this little dosing funnel, game changer. We had these for a while before they were released and they're very, very good. I literally can't live without mine now. Just can't. I love it. It's so like mess free and delightful. And even, I'm using this backwards, but so I'm, you know, more inclined to make mess, but even at home, I just love it. And it means I can trust my boyfriend to use a coffee machine without coming back and looking like a horrible mess. Okay, this is slightly wonky, so it, let's hope this splits okay. Um, 
don't like that noise, not one bit. Just make sure this is actually going to go in both the cups. Ooh, there we go. Love that. Sorry, I can't stop it. This is coming out now, isn't it? So, oh, no, 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 no. There we go. Okay. Gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous. Um, the other thing is, now, look. The jug might help you as well. I really like these, these aren't sage jugs. They're actually just from Nisbets, Nisbets, Nisbets. Um, I really like them because they have quite a sharp tip on them. But the jug that you get in your box is actually quite ideal for pouring a heart um, because it's not, um, it's quite a dull, not dull, that's not the word I'm looking for, but the tip doesn't come out low, so it's quite nice to pour a heart. Um, I'm just prepping this milk. Um, but yeah, you might find that different jugs kind of help a little bit. Okay, should we pour, should we pour some hearts? Just good to, to be ready, you know? Two shots here. There we go, lovely. Just so that, like I said, it is going to be a little bit lighter in colour, but it just, we've only got so much time in the day. Okay, here we go, preheating. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay, pull that out. There we go. There she blows. Now I can actually like now because I'm not well, I've shown you how to do this now, so I can actually really look in and focus on it. Apologies if you can see my forehead there. I'm trying to stop that never being able to see that on a, on a Friday afternoon. But what I will just while I'm texturing this milk, after this masterclass, there's um, a survey that's gonna come up. It'll take you five minutes, it's like six questions in there. Um, it's completely anonymous, okay, so you don't have to, I don't want any of the details, but what I do want to know is have you enjoyed the masterclass, did you find it helpful, did your latte art improve if you did it along with us, um, and as I say it's completely anonymous and it just helps us to give you the best, best, best content that we can um, in these masterclasses, because we want you to be confident and feel like when your friends come round you can be like, yeah I can make you a sick coffee, um, and they're going to love it, we want that, so if you could fill that in, I'll remind you at the end in case you forget, but if you could fill that in, I would be forever appreciative um, because it's it very, very helpful to have that knowledge. And look, if you hated the class, you hated the class. I'd also love to know that because um, then we can change it. Okay, so one thing you can do if you've got too much milk or if your milk is a tiny bit thick, you can just whoop, get rid of that. Just pull the top off. Okay, swirl this. And then let's do this. Okay, so we're gonna start pouring from height. Okay, thin stream. And then go in, into the middle, pull up, and cut through. That is very pretty. Slightly wonky in the cup, but that's okay. We can do that. Very, very, very pretty. Okay, so I hope you all see what saw what I did there. Don't worry if you didn't, because I'm actually gonna do it again many many times but in there we have a nice sized heart if you wanted that to be any bigger which let's do that next time just for the fun but if we wanted that to be bigger we just put less um canvas in there and you can do like some wiggles to kind of fill it out a little bit but we're not there yet i'll show you that at the end and then that thin stream and it's pretty symmetrical i have to say pretty pretty symmetrical but that there let's do our next one okay so same thing do that. We want to preheat so there's going to be water. What also happens sometimes is steam ones will kind of suck up a little bit of the milk. So it's just really good habit to get into. Preheat it every single time. You don't want to add in any more water. It just won't work. Okay. And the joy of this as well is I'm doing this backwards. So it's going to be much easier for you at home than it is for me. Because you can actually stand in front of your coffee machine rather than have it in front of you. So there's our lovely tearing paper sound. Okay, and we have that vortex of the milk the whole way through, literally right from the start. If you're struggling, you can angle it a little bit. Personally, I, I do prefer to have my jug straight on. I, I don't find that I need to angle it, but if you are struggling, just do a little, you don't want to be kind of violent 45 degree angle, but angle it a little bit and it might just help you um, get the milk kind of moving around in the jug a little bit. Okay, 
wipe that off every time give it a really really good wipe very important because we want to keep our steam on really nice and clean there's our beautifully textured milk okay let's do this so give her a swirl because we just want to break the creme up if you have any little bubbles in your um, creme it can happen just give it a tap swirl okay and then we're going to pour from a height i'm just gonna put a little bit much in there so pour from a height there we go and then Do you see how that's bigger than the other one? So I started pouring. Firstly, I did less canvas. And the other thing I did is I poured a little bit faster. Okay? So she's, now, she's slightly wonky on one side. But that's okay. We still love her. But this is the same thing here. It's just that this one had slightly less um, canvas in it. And I just poured a little bit faster so that it spread out a little bit more. But beautiful hearts. Even when it's a little bit wonky, it's still very, very, very pretty. I'm going to put these all here because I love to do the test of how good was the milk and I'll show you them all at the end. But let's do one more heart and then what I'll do is I'll show you a couple of things you can do once you've mastered the heart. One of my favourites is the wiggly heart um, and what I used to do as well, people do find that um, when you, I'm actually just going to, that. Um, when you first start learning, and I did this, and it, you had to kind of train yourself up. Glad that wasn't uh, zoomed in there, but it's it's kind of it's it's okay. That's fine. I love that when that happens, and that falls off. That's okay. It happens. There we go. I still love it though. Um, you have to kind of train yourself out of it because the thing is, is that they are different patterns and they're used for different things. So you need to be able to pour a heart by itself. But a wiggly heart is just that little wiggle of the wrist and you'll find it's very pretty, it's very simple. And it's what a lot of people will do when they're trying to pour a heart, but they're different patterns and it's important to be able to do them differently because like I say, use them for different things. Okay, pop that in there. Let's do one under there, one under there, and try and make sure they don't make that noise that I don't, I don't particularly love. Oh, lovely! There she is. Just a little bit too much. Um, our dose was a little bit high, but this is a little bit better, a little bit nicer. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay, and we've got two jugs here ready to go. Always good to be. Bad. Are you okay over there? <laughs> no. See, we've got a live working studio here. Anything can happen. Okay, wipe that down. Let's do this. Pop them in there. There we go. Same thing again. Okay, pull it out to the side. Now, I've actually filled this jug up a little bit much, so you're probably going to see what's a little bit harder if you do over so yeah, just slightly um because you want to have as much control over the milk as possible and obviously you're adding air into the jug or into the milk so the volume is going to increase so you need to give yourself that space um to be able to allow for the volume increase so i can sometimes sometimes find that it will overflow a little bit but that's okay it happens There's nothing we can do about it i think we're just about okay there so you can see no big bubbles and we've got that constant rotation and I'm not moving the jug around. You want to be in control. You are you are in control of the jug. So if you're moving your jug around loads, you're going to be have less control over what comes out at the end. There we go. Beautiful. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous, darling. Gorgeous. Okay, give it a wipe. And then I probably will pour some off the top of this just because the jug is very full and sometimes it's easier to pour when you have just the right amount of milk okay i'm gonna do one more heart and then i'm gonna show you a wiggly heart just because i absolutely love them okay so pour from a height say it with me pour from a height Sweet side to side and then oh she's a little bit wonky but that's okay there we go Beautiful, beautiful love heart. <laughs> that sound.
I was like chalk on a chalk, chalk, chalk on a chalkboard? Don't know what, chalk on a chalkboard, that's right, isn't it? Okay, there's our heart. Now, the one with, uh, this is what I've been waiting for. I love a wiggly heart. It's one of my absolute, absolute favourites. And it's the same thing, but we're just gonna really, you need to keep your wrist really loose for this. Because um, otherwise you'll be like this and it's really hard. It's, it takes a lot of practice, but look, if you're doing it anyway, then just make sure that you're separating them out as I mentioned. Okay. Adding our air in. Move that out of the way. Apologies. Got my camera up here and I keep forgetting that I'm like not like this, so you can fully see my hairline, which nobody needs. Okay, lovely, lovely, lovely. And the other thing is like your milk is totally always saveable. So like if I I've just added a little bit more air in there on purpose, so it's gonna be a little bit thick. But it's always saveable, it's almost always usable, and it's especially when it comes to latte art, it's more about practicing the actual motions of pouring it. Um, it will become muscle memory eventually. It's kind of like riding a bike, like you just have to you have to keep getting back on once the stabilizers are taken off, like you'll fall off, and that's okay. But we, we learn by making mistakes, so beautiful. Okay, let's just let that go. Okay, wiggly heart. Oh, I'm so excited. It's one of my faves. Um, this is also called a layered heart, but just personally, I prefer the term wiggly. It's a little bit more fun. Okay, so I'm going to be really nice and loose on the wrists, and then there we go. Pour from the height. Okay, and then wiggle, 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 wiggle. Oh, it's just about there. Okay, so because the milk isn't is a little bit thick. It's a little bit harder to see, but you have these layers here. Now, if your milk is thin, I might do another one just so I can show you this, but you'll kind of get a little bit of a break up. So you can kind of see there's like these little brown things in between. It might be a little bit harder to see on your screen, but it's just where you're doing those wiggles. So you kind of want it to be, I'll do this with an empty jug, but you want it to be loose. So if you're pouring like this, you're gonna struggle. You wanna be really loose. It's all in the wrist. So wiggle, 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 not wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Now, I wanna show you something. Pull this back in here. Now, if I had, which I do, but it's not to hand, so I do apologize. But what you can do to practice, there's a few things. I'm just gonna, sorry, I'm just cleaning this because it looks a bit gross. But a little bit of an unlimited latte art hack, right? Because we don't wanna waste what we have. So we're gonna put this in here. And now what I would recommend is a little bit of hot chocolate powder sprinkled over the top and then you can practice. And it's gonna be a perfect amount for your cup. Now I appreciate that there's nothing there, but if you put a little bit of, like just a really, really small sprinkle um, of hot chocolate powder, you'll be able to see your pattern really, really clearly. Oh, I thought that was a really bad tan light then, but it's not, it's just the light. Um, You'll be able to see a pattern really clearly and it's a really good way to just practice because this is the right viscosity um, it's not going to be like pouring with water you'll find that you just get used to and look i used to do this when i worked i used to work on the on the shop floor and when i was first learning this is what i would do so we didn't waste um and it is so un unbelievably helpful just to have something that's the right kind of liquid the right viscosity especially with the wiggles um, it's a it's a very helpful tip. The other thing that you can do as well for texturing your milk, firstly, but also to practice the latte art, is you can use soy sauce for your coffee because right, we don't want to waste things. It's not fun to waste things. Coffee is not the cheapest thing in the world, so we want to save where we can. And so you can use soy sauce, just like any old cheap soy sauce, as your espresso. And then if you do water with a drop of washing up liquid in for your milk, please don't drink it. Please, I don't want to get any messages saying that it was disgusting. Please don't drink it. But it actually acts very, very, very similarly. It's not going to be the same, but it's just kind of pre practicing getting that milk right, practicing the patterns. And if we just pull these over here, if we can get that top camera. So these are the four hearts that I've done. Move that there. There, so that was the second one and this is our first one that we did and it's they're still all there 
This has been here for I don't since the start of the class. Forty five minutes and it's still beautiful. Like I say, these are slightly lighter in colour because we just did a single shot, but that is what you want. That's your ideal kind of textured milk. And with that, we conclude. But what we will I will say is we've got about five, ten minutes to do a little QA. So um, these two over here, I can see them been typing away like maniacs. So I assume that you've been asking lots and lots of questions. But if there's something specific that hasn't been answered that you want answered, pop it in there now. Or if you guys have seen any cool questions that you think are interesting, then please send them in. Yeah, we've had a couple of fun ones. Amazing, love um, that. So someone's saying, okay, so you can split the shot to do two lattes. Um, would they recommend using one large jug or two milk jugs to make those two lattes? Two milk jugs. So you, um, you can use one jug. It's called splitting the milk. You'll always end up needing to use two jugs to split your milk anyway. But really, that's going to be for making like a cappuccino and a flat white or a cappuccino and a latte. You'll struggle a lot to do milk that's going to get you two lots of latte art. It's not impossible, but it's you're basically making work harder for yourself. They do it all the time in cafes, but that's people that are making 300 cups of coffee and they need to get them done in a very quick um, time period. Um, it's not fun to wait ages for your coffee. So I would say you can, but I personally would recommend texturing your milk in two separate jugs because also you're practicing more um, and the more you practice, the better you get. Thank you for that, Georgia. Of course. Um, we've also had a few people asking about uh, potentially different designs. So yeah. um, beyond the harbour, what would be kind of the next one you'd recommend people try? Cool. So wiggly heart, that's the first one. Or a tulip. So a tulip is just stacked hearts. So just going to put this in here. So a tulip, oh, maybe have cloth nearby. A tulip is just stacked hearts, okay? So same thing, you're gonna canvas, lovely, 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 and then you're gonna push, push, push. So it's that same motion that we were doing of this, but then you push it, and once you've done that, you're gonna pull it up and cut through. Start with two, then three, then four. It's the same thing, don't run before you can walk. But tulip is honestly probably my favourite pattern because, oh my god, they look so beautiful and they are so easy once you've mastered them. And then what you can do once you've done a tulip is you can do a winged tulip, which is like, those two are kind of like tied for me. And a winged tulip is your wiggly heart. So you can start with wiggly heart and then you do regular ones or you can do wiggly, wiggly, regular, regular. A wiggly winged tulip is next after a tulip i would say they are so gorgeous as well they look so beautiful and then onwards from that you've got your rosetta so your rosetta is basically a wiggly heart but you pull it up and through i did a really good one the other day actually i have to show you this one second let me pull it out let me just go through my i think i put it in my favorites i don't put it on the top camera yet because otherwise you would just see pictures of my dog mm -hmm. which i mean everybody wants to see pictures of my dog but not right now but oh here she is i was so chuffed with this but this is your Rosetta, so I hope you can see that. If we put that on the top camera, there we go. That's your Rosetta. I hope that's in focus. Maybe I'm bring it down a bit. Um, so this is literally just a wiggly heart, but you pull it up. This is the best one I've ever done. And I nearly cried when I did it because I find them very, very difficult. But a Rosetta is just a wiggly heart. So it's that same thing, but then you need to pull it up. And from there, you can do swans, you can do unicorns. You can do dogs, you can do all manner of things, um, but they mainly come from getting a heart really solid and feeling really confident with the heart. Okay, and then we've got a little question from Oliver. Do you find the wiggly heart actually a little bit easier than the, the solid plain heart? Yeah. And if you're wondering any tips for the standard heart and why you might find it easier to do a wiggly heart? Yeah, so that's exactly what I was saying is before before when I was talking about the wiggly heart is I used to do it when I first started is that it some people just naturally wiggle to fill out the shape so it's it's more of just a like mental note to be like don't wiggle the jug like you just need to keep the jug as still as possible but it's completely normal to find the wiggly easier and there's actually nothing wrong with that because you're pouring a heart at the end of the day but it's ideal to have them both in your arsenal so that you can make sure that you're doing different patterns because like some people would do swans with a 
a little stack first or a tulip for example it's just keeping your jug really nice and still and like i say it's more of a mental note than anything and it's just practicing holding it there um but yeah practice is is, is going to be the biggest thing but it's completely normal to find it easier still being really hard and then um one of the, uh, some of us they can see an oat milk heart and see what that looks like you can that. see an oat milk heart yes give me a sec let me just move all these these bits out of the way there so it's exactly the same thing right because once you've done your milk your milk is the thing that is different um because once your milk is right then it's it's exactly the same thing when it comes down to actually pouring the latte up um same technique and everything but it's just getting that milk right the biggest thing to make the difference shake it up solid tap. While I'm doing that, are there any other questions? Um, yeah, so we have a person, a, a, a thanks from Toby, and he's off to give us a try. Amazing, so, Toby, um, love that. Hayley is asking roughly, how many seconds should we count for adding air into the milk at the beginning of texture, and what's a rough guide there? Okay, so it depends on which machine you have, which is why I didn't mention it at the start, because if you've got uh, an express, you're gonna need to add like a little bit more air than if you have a pro, and if you've got a dual boiler, you're gonna need to add a little bit less air, etc. But for a general rule, anywhere from like five to seven, eight seconds is pretty good, um, and that will give you about the right texture. But like I say, it's gonna depend on the machine you have, and I would just experiment with it, play around with it for anywhere from five to eight seconds um, is good. Um, and if you've got an automatic machine, the best setting for like getting good latte art would be flat white um, on the Barista Touch Oracle Oracle Touch. On an Oracle, it would be like around four or five on the like froth level. And then if you have a Bambino Plus, that middle setting is is pretty good for. Um, latte art. Anything else while I texture this milk? Um, yeah. So, firstly, to speak to us about the, uh, the, the complex patterns, uh, let's thank us for the presentation. We'll have to give them a try. Lovely. And then, uh, Jeremy asked, like, what's the advantage of doing it manually rather than using the auto setting the in there? Now, I prefer to do it manually. My mum and dad have a Bambino Plus, um, and whenever I go to their house, I will use it manually. So there isn't really any um, advantage to doing it manually or automatically. I think it's your preference. If you struggle with texturing milk, then having it done automatically is amazing, right? Because you don't need to worry about it. Um, I find the process of texturing milk so like cathartic. Um, I just like sometimes I'll zone out, um, but I don't necessarily think. I think it depends on the person. I don't necessarily think there's a um, any advantage or disadvantage to doing it automatically or manually. It just really depends on your needs as a as a person or your family, um, and what you think. Like if you know that you're going to struggle with milk, or if you just prefer the idea of having it done for you, automatic is great. If you're a hands-on type of person, then manual is, is awesome. Okay, oat milk hearts. So, we've just added a little bit more air, just a tiny, tiny bit more air into our oat milk, okay? Because it will be a little bit thinner otherwise, and that might be where you're struggling, is that if your milk texture isn't correct, then you're, you're gonna struggle. But that's the same with dairy milk. But the exact same process is going to apply. Okay, so we're going to start pouring up from a height. And then. There's a heart. So we did the exact same thing. It's just that the milk texture is ever so slightly different because we've just added a little bit more air. Um, in fact, I probably could have added a tiny bit more air. So what you will often see with oat milk that you won't see with dairy milk is it kind of looks like a colouring in that you've like missed the lines off a little bit. 
Um, and that just means like I could have added a tiny little bit more air into that. But otherwise, it's exactly the same thing. Do we have any other questions? Maybe like one or two more? Yeah, we've got uh, one or two more questions. So, awesome. um, Martin has asked about soy milk. Now, Ooh, Martin, <laughs> cheeky devil. Go on, what do you want to know? Um, he just wants to know, he said, how about soy milk? I know most of the tips you said for oat would apply, but... Yeah, for sure. So, it's it, almost exactly the same thing, except soy milk is not the easiest to work with. Um, soy milk, you will often find that because of the acidity of coffee, it will... Mm -hmm quite hard it's i would honestly say i mean obviously if you can only drink soy milk you can only drink soy milk and that's okay um even though it's kind of the one that's like been around since the dawn of time that was like the first alternative milk it's definitely the hardest one to work with my best advice is everything i've said jug in the fridge in the freezer almost even give yourself like a lot of time um i think you can put tiny bit of bicarbonate of soda like and i'm talking a grain maybe a couple because it like offsets the acidity um but it is a lot harder with soy milk because it is prone to splitting more than any any other um alternative so it's just practice really like even baristas who are like proper done this for years really struggle with soy milk it's just one of those things um that there are like in terms of latte art, anyway, there are better alternatives out there, as in ones that are easier, but it's just gonna be practice. Don't go any hotter than 55, certainly. Keep your jug in the fridge, make sure everything is really nice and cold, and it's just practice, unfortunately. Soy milk is not the easiest one, unfortunately. Thanks for that, Georgia. Of um, course. For those that have put in specific questions about the different machines in our range, please feel free to go to the SAGE website uh, click the little picture of one of our experts and you can speak to someone here that speaks specific questions about those machines. For sure. Um, but Jules has said, thanks so much, you can't make, uh, here's your comment, get practicing, but do we get to see a picture of your dog? You can actually see my dog if you want to. Pippi, please hold. Come here, is your time to, sh oh, come here. She's actually underneath because she's, she's only a little sausage. Oh, ready? Three, two, one, here she is. Welcome Pippin. This is Pippin. I have just woken her up from a nap for this, love her. Um, she's a sausage, she's just turned one, uh, and we love her to death in here. She's, she's the star of the show. So with that, a few things, please. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm gonna have to hold on to her now. Um, survey at the end, it'll pop up at the end. Please fill it out if you want to, it's completely anonymous. And like I say, it will just help us to um, improve the content that we're delivering. So we wanna make sure that it's absolutely the best that it can be um, that's the first thing secondly as Ant mentioned um, if you have anything machine specific pop on talk to our team of experts they're amazing they're here in Sage Studios right now you get an instant response you can do a video call if you want to you don't have to turn your video on though um, and if you want to learn how to text your milk in a little bit more in depth um, and also how to make wonderful different coffee drinks like um, lattes, flat whites and cappuccinos, then we have a milk texturing and coffee recipes ma uh, masterclass that you can also book onto if you would like to. But with that, it's been an absolute pleasure spending my Friday afternoon with you. I hope you've enjoyed, Pippin certainly has. She's been having a quality nap time there. Um, thank you to Tom and Anne for being wonderful moderators and I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful bank holiday weekend. Bye everyone. See Bye. you guys. Bye.